topic of conversation this morning mm -hmm. on tea or coffee. We are asking, what is the price of education? We're looking into the fees hike in current in uh, in uh, is actually going on in the country at the at the moment, where Nigerian universities are increasing their fees by 200 percent. Now we have a guest this morning, Kenneth Ikenwa, who is a member of the Nigerian Institute of Management and the Nigerian Institute of Training and Development. He currently works as a lecturer in the Faculty of Management Science at the University of Lagos, Nigeria. He's a highly experienced management consultant providing consulting services to various sectors such as tertiary, education, oil and gas, insurance, public service and more. With expertise in areas like strategic learning, industry dynamics, and life cycle management, workplace diversity, and etc. Kenneth brings valuable insights to enhance corporate performance and advantage. And he's also a friend of the house. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Ade. Good morning, Ibukon. <laughs> Good nice morning. Can hear yes, <laughs> we can, we can hear, hear you very clearly. Nice to have you on the show again today. How are you doing? All nice being with you guys again. I must apologize for not being able to make it to the oh, studio. Oh, no problem. No problem. I really, really wanted to be there. Oh, no problem. No problem. So, so let's get into the conversation. We're looking at the university's free um, fees hike that is on, currently ongoing in the country. What are, what are your thoughts in the recent surge in these fees? across Nigerian institutions. All right, thank you very much once again for having me on. Um, it's a great pleasure. There's no better time to have spoken about a topic like this mm -hmm. uh, than now. We understand what the dynamics are in the country today. Yeah. Uh, the level of hardship, the level of poverty, uh, over 120 million, if not 150 million Nigerians mm. are living under just two thousand naira a day, which is about two dollars a day, um, we have a literacy level that is at a terrible rate of about forty-five percent, wow. uh, an illiteracy level at about forty-five percent, and a poverty level of at about sixty-three percent. And all of these issues, especially that which has to do with poverty and the quality of life and the standard of living, definitely has dropped. Uh, with the recent removal of, of subsidy uh, from uh, the petroleum sector. So you can begin to imagine what the multiplier effect will be when you now have to have people who rely on the public system of education hmm. at least so that they can breathe, so that okay. they can breathe, now have to be forced to pay an excess of about a hundred or two hundred percent increase in tuition fees and other fees that students have to cope with in public universities. Hmm. I do not think, and I'm speaking, I you know would usually like to say this. I'm not speaking on behalf of my union, I'm not speaking on behalf of any university, I'm speaking in my capacity as a Nigerian that was born in Nigeria, bred in Nigeria buttered in Nigeria, but now being battered by Nigeria. Wow. So I speak in that capacity. I do not think it is fair to the 63% of Nigerians that are struggling to survive. And as the conversation goes on, I'm sure we'll be able to bring ourselves to points of convergence and points of divergence on the subject matter. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, it's, I, I understand why you would be pained or upset at what is going on at this time, which is even sudden. Now, as a lecturer, have you observed any significant impact on students' enrollment or participation due to the rise in the tuition fees? Like, are there any specific challenges that students are facing as a result now? But particularly, I mean, Unilag is about to go back to session. So is there any, um, maybe your students have reached out to you in any capacity? Okay, so I won't want you to put Unilag in the spotlight. Uh, Unilag is not just the only federal university, but it is at least the first university of first choice and the nation's pride. Mm, so it is okay. sort of a big one, you know, for other universities across uh, the nation. But truth be told, even before now, I mean, I am more of a parent kind of uh, lecturer. So by that, I mean I interact and interface with the students a lot. I allow that relationship to actually flourish. 
And I can tell you that even before we got to this stage and this state in our economic circle, okay. um, you find a lot of indigent students that are not even able to afford what, in quotes, you will call the meager fees or the cost of educating themselves hmm. at the university level. So sometimes, and I'm speaking on good authority on this, sometimes some of the students either have to, you know, do some manual jobs, okay. manual jobs, or some lecturers have to stand in as parents of some of these children to supplement their education, to supplement them with monthly allowances, helping them pay part of their school fees. Mm -hmm. So the challenge has always been there. And it is a systemic problem. Systemic in the sense that they, I, I remember some 25, 28 years ago when I was in the university, I, from the part of the country I come from, there used to be something we call bursary coming in from my state, Delta State, to the university where I was schooling. Like I said, I was born, bred, and, you know, bought out in Nigeria. I never schooled abroad. Uh, uh, and you would see this bursary allocation coming. You will hear that it has come. But I can tell you on good authority that in the 90s, I never got one naira from my state government in terms of bursary. But the state government always made allocations for that. So there, there is a complex of events, a combination of variables that will just make life harder for indigent students, harder for many families to even think okay. of wanting to send their children to university uh, to get uh, quality education. And of course, the dropout rate most likely may just turn high if uh, certain palliatives, in quotes, are not put in place to alleviate the conditions of Nigerian students uh, that will be faced with this monster called high institution fees. All right. All right. Now, I'm glad you mentioned you brought up the um, accountability on the part of how some of the funds are used by the, some of these Nigerian institutions. Now, a lot of people have come out to say that one of the reasons as to why we're seeing a, a, a hike in university fees is as a result of the introduction of the student loan bill. What is your reaction to this? Do you think um, the Student Loan Act has an adverse effect on hiking the price of these universities? I think you just got me on that. I, I, you just uh, took the words out of my mouth and my mind, actually. So I'm thinking maybe I should come to you for some therapy because <laughs> this, is really, this is really sad. You're able to read my mind, mm. but I, I figured that you're going to talk about it, so I don't want to talk about it in my last uh, uh, submission. Okay. Okay, so this is a clear case of a Peter and Paul situation. So hmm. are you robbing Peter to pay Paul or are you robbing Paul to pay Peter? Hmm. Uh, that's really the question. Yeah, a lot of people had anticipated really from not just academic circles that if you are going to be introducing student loans, uh, it was going to be a sort of a bait for the uh, government, uh, oversight institutions, regulatory institutions to introduce a hike in tuition fees or in fees generally for public mm -hmm. universities. Um, well, I can also tell you, I'm with authority that even before the introduction of student loans, which definitely would not saturate the entire polity and the entire population, and with very stringent conditions, yes. students have been made in some public universities and some state universities to pay uh, a lot, you know, in terms of fees for quality education uh, and quantity education, as it were, which is not affordable. Not affordable in the sense that the Nigerian state is rich enough, in my view, to fund the education of her citizens at the public level. Now, don't forget that the tertiary institution in Nigeria, the tertiary institution, the tertiary sector in Nigeria, exist in dichotomy. So you have the private sector and you have the public uh, institutions, public sector institutions like the Unilag and the, the, the OSU and the UI and, and co. So you have a division where some people now are able to say, okay, with the incessant strikes and with the lack of infrastructure in public institutions, I would rather my child will go to a private you know, secondary, uh, a private secondary school, or even a private university. Okay. But that said, you still find out that those in the public uh, 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 university, public tertiary institutions, are still not finding it easy to cope mm -hmm. with meeting up, not just with fees, but with everything that comes 
uh, with living uh, or with being a student in Nigeria. Let's take, for instance, the issues uh, on, of, of accommodation, hostel accommodations. Mm. You find that at the most of our public universities, the infrastructure has not been expanded. It has not been stretched beyond what you had even in, in the 70s or in the 80s or in the early 90s. So you find hostel accommodations where students are supposed to be four in a room, and you find about 24 students staying in a room allocated by your university to stay in a room meant for four students, meant for six students, or eight students. So if you are doing anything in terms of inflating the cost of education, you must have a corresponding expansion in the infrastructure that is on ground. Now, but I come back to say, even if you decide to invest in infrastructure, and I know a day and a book, you are going to get me there soon. <laughs> even if you try to invest in infrastructure, the Nigerian state, if the Nigerian state is serious about the development of Nigeria, you should make education as free as possible up until the first degree level. Mm. This is what is obtainable in other countries in the world. It's obtainable in Singapore, it's obtainable in Germany, it's obtainable in Botswana, our neighbors from the eastern region of Africa. And you can see the multiplier effect on the quality of the lives of the people, mm. on research and development, and on the, 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 the movement forward in terms of economic progression, economic freedom, and infrastructural development across these countries. If Nigeria is serious about being amongst the top 50 nations in the Committee of Nations by 2045 or by 2050, we just have to make education available, affordable, and well-funded by the Nigerian states. Mm. This submission that you just made, I think Ade had something as regards, said something as regards that earlier on in the show, as regards UK having um, free education up until um, university or, I mean, the tertiary level. Now, okay, so we are saying that the, um, the government should be able to fund uh, the educational system and ensure that education is free. But at this time, it's not really fully free. It's not even free, in how, I mean, particularly because the, they're trying to increase the fees. But how do you perceive the financial difficulties faced by public institutions and their rationale behind implementing this? Because you say it's possible to have education free, but then these institutions are going through a lot, and that is why they have decided that we need to imp increase the fees. So what's your take on it? Okay, so um, in economics, there's something we'll call subsidy, and there's something we'll call subvention. So public institutions, especially at tertiary level, get subventions from the universities. Public institutions are also given that autonomy to drive for what we call internally generated revenue. So there are two types of funding for universities. One can be organic and one can be inorganic. But let us come back to the crux of the matter. There has been a shift, a reinvention of economic activities and economic debates in the Nigerian uh, social structure. And it's all centered around a very, very monoproduct, which is petrol, and the removal of subsidy in that sector. Now, what we were told is that when I or we remove subsidy from that sector, we will be saving the government 400 billion naira mm -hmm. every month. So in the excess of about 4.8 trillion naira every year. So if that is the case, which comes to about three to four hundred billion, three to four hundred billion, three to four hundred billion dollars every month, we would have expected that if you are taking away from a particular sector, you will be taking what obviously was a scam in a particular sector, which you have told us is not feasible, which the IMF has said, which the Bretton Woods institutions have said, you have to withdraw to develop, and put it in sectors, critical sectors, that will improve the standard of living mm. for the people, and that will alleviate you know, the, the suffering of the Nigerian people. And the first and foremost sector that I would have expected the government to focus on as an organic strategy for growth, for poverty alleviation, and for increasing the happiness index of Nigerians would have been to divert at least 30 to 40% of what you have saved from the subsidy scam and subsidy regime into the education sector. 
that will increase the amount of money that you make, amount of allocation that you make for in the budget for the Nigerian educational uh, sector. So we come back to the mathematics and the data and the statistics of all of that. Mm -hmm. It is possible to fund these public institutions, all right, on a 50-50 basis, private sector initiative or, or organic initiatives by the universities themselves and subventions by the government and subsidy from the government, which will mean no increase in school fees, no increase in tuition fees, and, you know, an increase in expenditure on infrastructure, on research and development, and an increase in the motivation, in the remuneration, and the compensation, in the benefits and package that you make available for university staff so that we can face our work and do our work with all commitment, with all purpose, and with the highest degree of integrity. So if you are saving 400 billion from subsidy, please divert about 30 billion on that. Even if it's just in a year, <laughs> 30 to 40 billion on that of that to the Nigerian public education uh, institutions, and you will see what a remarkable change we would have from staff, from students, and the kind of quality mm. of education you will get from public universities in Nigeria beginning oh. with the University of Lagos. Oh. All right, all right. Now, I'm glad you mentioned the role of governments, you know, in ensuring, in, in you know, trying to handle the situation when it comes to the, the, the increase in fees in university. But what are your thoughts on the call for increased transparency and accountability in how universities actually manage their finances? And I'm, and I'm glad it's something that you mentioned. You know, as somebody who is currently in the academic system of this country, how can universities be more transparent on how they actually, you know, um, use their funds and allocate their funds for the betterhood of the students. Okay, so public universities are more or less like para state house that are an extension of the Ministry of Education. Right. And so the Ministry of Education, what I call the MOE, has a regulatory oversight function to perform in terms of appointments, in terms of remuneration, in terms of, you know, general administration away from the a uh, disguised autonomy that uh, most public universities are expected to have. Now, when you talk about transparency, accountability, and full disclosure, these are three core pillars of corporate governance, okay, at any level, whether it's at the small business level, whether it's at the government level, whether it's at the local government level or federal government level, these are three pillars, these are three catalysts that are needed for social efficiency all right, and maximum social benefits to be enjoyed in any institution and in any society. I think basically the rules and the regulations are there. What we basically need is the will and the commitment uh, and the sincerity of purpose that will trickle from top to bottom to ensure that what is needed to be done is done. So that, like I said on this show uh, a couple of, uh, a year or two years ago, um, what we're having across the Nigerian polity is so much institutions in Nigeria, especially with what I believe is the unnecessary proliferation of universities, not just private universities, right. even public universities. Now some states are having three universities. How can you go ahead to have three state universities when you are not even able to fund the only one right. that you have? These are issues that bother like, on sincerity of purpose and, you know, commitment to collective development, yeah. as it were. So we should not just be asking about the questions of transparency, right. full disclosure, and accountability in public universities. Those that are going off to spin off more universities, those that are getting certificates uh, of registration or licenses to start universities that they do not have capacity to run or to operate, this is where the transparency, this is where the accountability, this is where the principles of good governance right. and futuristic planning to actually come in place. All right. Challenges I mean, Ms. 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 Ikewa, we really I love your passion. We love your passion on this conversation, <laughs> but we've actually run out of time. We've learned so much, you know, from your insights and you know, someone who is actually in the academic system um in this in, in this country. Thank you so much for coming on our show this morning. We've learned a lot from you yes. this morning. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. My pleasure. See you soon. See you very soon, sir. Thank you very much for that.